Good evening and welcome to my class. I'm Mr. Richard Blevins and I'll be here to guide you through uh, an overview of Georgia's assault and battery offenses. Uh, while this subject may be considered a little bit confusing to many, uh, we're gonna try our best to delve into the elements, uh, discuss them individually and break them down so that it's a little bit more understandable and hopefully give you the working knowledge that you uh, seek. I will say that if you're here for an experience uh, equivalent to what you may get at law school and in-depth explanations, uh, you're not gonna find that in this class. Uh, that is not my uh, forte. Uh, I like to simplify things so that the layperson may understand the differences uh, in the law. And today we have chosen to do some assault and battery offenses. So let's get right into it. <coughs> To begin, we'll talk about our terminal performance objectives. These are the takeaways from the course. Uh, these are what I hope that you will learn today. Uh, and as we begin, uh, we will cover them. That participants will learn the legal definition according to the official code of Georgia annotated uh, for the following offenses. And here are the five offenses that we will focus on today. The first one is simple assault. That's OCGA 16.5-20. And I'm not gonna give you the um, reference for each one of them, I'll just name them. Uh, the next one is aggravated assault. So you have simple assault and aggravated assault. And then you have simple battery, battery and aggravated battery. Now these all sound uh, different, but they're similar in many ways. And I think that's what creates such confusion. So again, we're gonna to try to dispel some of that. Um, today we're also gonna, you'll be able to, to identify and define what an element of a crime is and you'll be able to recognize those elements within any particular given legal definitions. Uh, participants will understand the difference between a felony and a misdemeanor. Uh, those are common terms you hear, a lot of folks hear them on television, and uh, a lot of times what we see and hear on television is not correct. So we'll talk about that here today. Participants will be able to apply the knowledge of Georgia's assault and battery offenses to some specific scenarios that we're gonna give. Uh, participants will have an applicant, I'm sorry, an amplified understanding of Georgia's assault and battery offenses. So that's the goal today, that's the plan. We're gonna get right into this, beginning first with simple assault. Uh, this is the uh, Georgia Code 16.5-20, I'm sorry, 16-5-20. And basically the elements of a crime, as we begin to dissect this law, an element is a specific charge within a law. It is specific phrases and wording that has to be met in order to uphold a charge. So when uh, practitioners of the law, law enforcement, um, district attorneys, uh, defense attorneys, attorneys abroad, uh, look at these things, they look at the elements to see if the elements actually fit the crime. And in this particular one, the very first one we're gonna talk about simple assault, uh, we're gonna cover those elements and the definition. A person commits the offense of simple assault when he or she either attempts to commit a crime or, uh, I'm sorry, attempts to commit a violent injury to a person or another, or commits an act which places another in reasonable apprehension of immediately receiving a violent injury. So this one has two prongs or two elements that either one could stand alone or be used together. The first element is listed on uh, number one. It says an attempt to commit a violent injury to the person or another. So anyone who attempts to commit any violent crime against another person would be guilty of the charge of, or offense of simple assault. The second element or says commits an act which places another in reasonable apprehension of immediately receiving a violent injury. Now, one thing to note about both of these are the injury doesn't have to occur. There does not have to be an actual physical force or markings or any of that on the individual. You simply just have to have another person in a violent manner come at you with a purpose to injure you or um, make you reasonably scared that you're gonna be injured if they did make contact with you. That in and of itself uh, sustains the elements for uh, simple assault. The next one we want to talk about is aggravated assault, and that's Georgia Code 16.5-21. 
A person commits the offense of aggravated assault when he or she assaults, and then here we go with the elements of the crime, with intent to murder, to rape, or to rob, with a deadly weapon or with any object, device, or instrument, which when used offensively against a person is likely or actually does result in the bodily injury itself. A person or persons without legal justification by discharging a firearm from within a motor vehicle towards a person or persons shall also be guilty of aggravated assault. So again, here we have elements that have multiple uh, prongs that have to go together, and then we have one standalone. So we'll cover that again. To charge someone with aggravated assault, a person has to have the intent to murder, rape, or rob with a deadly weapon or an object, device, or instrument which used offensively against the person is likely or actually does result in serious bodily injury. So if I came at you with an ax and said, uh, my intent is to uh, kill you and to strike you with my ax until you're dead, uh, that is an aggravated assault. Now, this does not mean that I've actually made contact with you. This means that I have merely made the threat or put you uh, in apprehension of receiving uh, potentially a robbery, I'm sorry, uh, or a murder or to be raped. Uh, does not mean that I've actually went through with it. It just means that I'm trying to or that is my intent. Um, the last one, uh, bullet point D, says a person or persons without legal justification by discharging a firearm from within a motor vehicle towards any persons or persons. So this is in the event of like a drive-by shooting. Someone actually shoots a firearm uh, without lawful purpose. Can you name a lawful purpose? Is there ever a time where you would need to shoot a firearm outside of the vehicle? I can't think of any, um, unless you're some kind of way trying to protect yourself, but even then that's a stretch. There's not really any good ways to answer that uh, to make it lawful and justifiable. So those are the two assaults. We talked about a simple assault and an aggravated assault. And again, if, to, to equate both of those and understanding in simple terms, those are the fear of threat of harm or bodily injury, of death, of robbery. Um, th they never actually carry through with it. It just simply put you at risk of those. Now we're actually going to get into when force or, or physical assault uh, actually takes place. Uh, many would say that uh, a simple assault is an attempted battery uh, because in the simple assault, it is someone who tries to harm you, whereas the actual battery itself does harm you. So let's begin looking at the batteries, the first of which is simple battery, uh, Georgia Code 165-23. And it basically uh, says that a person commits the offense of simple battery when he or she either A, intentionally makes physical contact of an insulting or provoking nature with the person of another, or intentionally causes physical harm to another. So if I came up to you and I just didn't like the shirt you were wearing and I wanted to physically demonstrate my dissatisfaction in your taste of clothing and I pushed you, that in and of itself would be uh, indicative of simple battery. Um, if by pushing you down, you fell to the floor and it caused harm to you, you fell and, and maybe you uh, landed on your behind and it jarred you in such a way that, that it caused physical harm, that is also falls under simple battery. So now we're going to kind of go up the pyramid a little bit. We're going to escalate into what is known as battery. Battery is Georgia Code 165-23.1. Battery, uh, a person commits battery when the offense of battery, when he or she intensely causes substantial physical harm or visible bodily harm to another. Key words in this, uh, in these elements, are substantial physical harm or visible bodily injury to another. So we're gonna use the scenario uh, that I just give you. Uh, I don't like your articles of clothing, I don't like the color, whatever it is, and I'm gonna show you in a very violent uh, and tumultuous way 
of why I don't like it. And I come at you and I approach you and I push you to the ground and maybe uh, amongst your neck and your shoulders where I place my hand, you now have red marks. You now have uh, physical markings where you can tell that I've had to put my hands on you. Maybe where you fell, um, you landed on your hand or your wrist and maybe you scraped yourself or you cut yourself and now you have a little bruising or bleeding that's starting to occur. You can definitely visually see it. Um, that could potentially fall under substantial physical harm and definitely the visible bodily harm of another. Uh, the second prong of battery says, as used in this code section, the term visible body harm means bodily harm capable of being perceived by another person or uh, other than the victim may, be, may include, but is not limited to, substantial blackened eyes, substantially swollen lips, or other facial or body parts or substantial bruises to the body parts. So let's say you get up from the floor and I decide to push you down again, but this time you duck and I accidentally poke you in the eye. And now your eye begins to swell. That is a battery because that is a substantial visible harm uh, to your eye. So that would fall under the battery charge. Now we're gonna to escalate to what's known as aggravated battery. That's Georgia Code 16523.1. And basically what this one is, it says a person commits the offense of aggravated battery when he or she maliciously causes bodily harm to another by depriving him or her of a member of his or her body, by rendering a member of his or her body useless, or by seriously disfiguring his or her body or a member thereof. So this one is to the extreme. This one escalates up the ladder, up the pyramid, if you will, and the charge of aggravated battery uh, is when someone maliciously attacks you. They're out to hurt you, to harm you, to maim you, to cause uh, extreme harm and possible disfigurement. And they basically render a member of your body, let's say, go back to the eye poke again. Well, let's say I did it in such a way that I intentionally tried to gouge your eye out and I tried to, to cause uh, loss of use of your eye and blindness in your eye. Well, that is substantial harm that limits a use of one of your body organs or functions. Uh, obviously, if you lose the ability to see, you're not able to, to use that eye and see and use it what, uh, what it was created for or how you previously had used it. And that would also be an aggravated um, battery. Now, it doesn't necessarily say anything <coughs> about a weapon being used in this particular scenario, but a person could use a weapon. It doesn't have to be just their hands. They could uh, use a knife or a machete or, or any other instrument uh, that they could find. Uh, could be a piece of a stick or a baseball bat or a rock or any of those things um, that could potentially render a member of your body useless or seriously disfigures you. Um, that would be an aggravated battery. So you'll see how the batteries started off simple, therefore we have simple battery. Then it went up to um, the ladder to an, um, a regular battery, which was a visible harm, uh, substantial harm, such as a blackened eye, a busted lip, a bloody nose, broke nose. Um, it's not really life altering. Um, you can heal, you will get better. Um, you will get uh, better over time, but it's not gonna be permanent damage. Whereas the aggravated battery is absolutely permanent, uh, that you lose the loss of a body organ or function or member thereof. Now, uh, to recap kind of what we talked about, we've talked about um, simple assault. Uh, we've talked about assault, or I'm sorry, aggravated assault. We've talked about simple battery, battery, and aggravated battery. So remember, the assaults simply place you in fear. They do not uh, put you in jeopardy of receiving the injury. They just make you feel like you're gonna be assaulted and injured. So that was, that's why I referred to it earlier as the potential for a, um, a, an assault would potentially be an attempted battery because it's something that you're trying to do but you haven't fully committed or went through with it. So let's consider this scenario. Let's say, scenario number one, that you and a few friends are walking out of a restaurant 
when you encounter an unknown male that appears to be intoxicated, wielding a golf club around in the air as pa uh, patrons as they leave. Now, you don't know this person. They're just out there flippantly swinging this golf club around their head and, and looking at people kind of crazy, and you don't know what to think of it. So you get scared. You and the friends that you're with, you stop, you see this, and you decide it's probably best for you and your friends to gather and walk away in opposite direction. And as you do so, this uh, individual who you don't know uh, starts to chase you. And this golf club, he's swinging it and wielding it around in the air uh, for no rhyme or reason and begins to chase you. And luckily for you, your car is nearby and you make it into your car. So the scenario has ended now. Uh, the person cannot get to you. The scenario is over. You've just been chased by this individual. What, if any, uh, assault and battery offenses have been committed here or would apply in this particular scenario? And I'll give you a moment to think about that. So if you're thinking it's an assault, you're correct. Um, because there was no physical contact whatsoever, it's not a battery, it's, it's none of the three batteries, it would fall under the assault category. And because it puts you under reasonable uh, apprehension of receiving an injury, it, that would definitely be uh, the assault. Now, let's do a second scenario. Let's say that you're outside of your apartment complex in the parking lot and you walked out there and you notice that there's a young man, possibly a juvenile, don't really know, he, he could be a juvenile, he could be a young adult, that's throwing rocks near your automobile. And in your, uh, over there by your automobile, you're afraid that he's going to try to damage uh, your vehicle or perhaps those of one of your neighbors. So you yell at this individual to stop throwing rocks around the cars. And next thing you know, without even batting an eye, that individual takes the rock and throws it at you, at your head. And it just zooms right by your head and they take off running behind the apartment building to where you can't see them any longer. Now, in this particular situation, this scenario has ended. Uh, the person threw a rock at you, uh, did not hit you, but you definitely were in fear that the rock was going to hit you, uh, as indicated by the way that you moved out of the way. Um, as we talk about the, the assault and battery offenses, which one do you think may apply here, if any? I'll give you a minute to think about that. And again, if you're thinking that again, along the lines of an assault because it didn't actually make physical contact, it didn't hit you in the eye or anything such as that, and you're thinking it's an assault, well, you're correct. Uh, because it did not um, touch you, then it falls in the category of an assault, not any of the three batteries. Now let's change it up a little bit. What if the rock hit you in the eye? Or, knock your, or hit you in the mouth and knock some of your teeth out. What would we call that? Is it still an assault or is it a battery? The correct answer is it now goes from an assault to an actual battery because now you have substantial physical harm to your person. Uh, if you lose some teeth, your teeth are permanent teeth, if you, if you knock them out, then that in and of itself uh, could potentially be a, a permanent loss of use of those natural teeth. Yes, you can go to the dentist. Yes, you can get them repaired. You may be able to get them put back in. You may have to get some kind of special Bondo or some kind of glue or whatever tools that the dentist uses these days. But it will never be 100% the same as it originally was. Your natural teeth are just that. They're, they're yours, they're natural, they're the way they are. And any alteration to that, you can get them back close to the way they were, but you can't ever get them back exactly 100% the way they were. So that would definitely be a battery. But the question is, which kind of battery would it be? Would it be a simple battery, a battery, or an aggravated battery? And as you think about that, I'll go ahead and tell you that it's a battery because it is a visible injury. If you remember the elements of battery, it's a visible injury, something that can be seen, some kind of substantial harm. Uh, that is definitely going to be a battery. Now, uh, I told you that we were going to talk about uh, felonies and misdemeanors, and we're going to finish up with this. So, in summation, a misdemeanor is uh, a crime that is punishable by one year or less of prison or jail and a fine of less than $1,000. Pretty simple, right? 1000 uh less than a year in jail. 
Now, anything that's over that, fines in excess of $1,000 and jail or prison sentences in excess of 12 months, well, that's a felony. Those are felony charges. So which ones of the, the, <coughs> the five that we discussed today are felonies and which ones are misdemeanors? Pretty simple to figure out. Um, a simple assault, putting you in fear of receiving a bodily injury uh, or reasonable apprehension of receiving a violent injury, that's a misdemeanor because they didn't actually do it. It just made you in fear of. Um, aggravated assault. Again, this one is going to be a felony. It's aggravated in nature. They intend to rape you. They intend to rob you. They intend to hurt you. Uh, murder you, kill you in some kind of violent, tumultuous way, this is definitely going to be uh, a more harsher crime than it is a felony. Simple battery, simple. Um, makes physical contact but doesn't substantially harm you, just makes physical contact, unwanted contact. Uh, that is going to be a misdemeanor. A battery, blackens your eye, busts your lip, bloody nose, any of those. Those are gonna be, uh, for the most part, are gonna be misdemeanors. Now there are some, some uh, circumstances which they could be high and aggravated misdemeanors, but they're, nonetheless, they're still misdemeanors. An aggravated battery, when you attempt to, to uh, maliciously cause body harm by depriving a person, a member, or use of their body, to maim them, to, to gouge an eye out, to cut an arm off or a hand or even a finger, Yes, that, uh, that potentially could be an aggravated battery and that is definitely more severe of a crime and that is a felony. So um, I just wanna recap real quick our term of performance objectives. Hopefully we've met those here today. Uh, we've talked about simple assault, what it is, the elements, aggravated assault, simple battery, battery, aggravated battery. Uh, we've talked about elements of a crime. We have distinguished between what a felony is and what a misdemeanor is and a couple differences there. And uh, hopefully you'll have some knowledge to speak of after today's class that you'll be able to understand some of the key components of what makes an assault an assault and a battery a battery and how they are similar but yet different along the way. Uh, that is all for today. I really appreciate your attention and time today and I hope that you found this uh, message today very uh, educational, and I hope you'll stay tuned for more to come. Thank you. I'm Richard Blevins. I look forward to hearing from you soon.